So knowing what I am about to talk about in this video is a real game changer for me in terms of alleviating suffering in my experience uh, without compromising insight. So today I'm really excited to talk to you about one of the biggest and most important shifts for me in the psycho-spiritual unfoldment. Now this concept came to light to me when I was studying internal family systems, uh, which is a therapeutic model for addressing trauma in our experience. Now, what's wonderful about a model like IFS, internal family systems, is that it sort of actually brings in some of the elements of what we're doing with self-inquiry. And it aligns very deeply with my experience. Now, I wanna take you back uh, a couple of years ago when I was practicing self-inquiry. Self-inquiry with the intent of waking up to my true nature. Uh, so I remember very distinctly being with my ex-partner, you know, I was just being, living life, right? Like uh, going about daily life and I was still suffering. Like there was so much, when I say suffering, I mean that I was doing a lot of meditation practice, so a lot of inner investigations, uh, you know, two hours of daily meditation and this sort of stuff. And yet I still had so much emotional pain and somatic pain and a dysregulated and hypersensitive nervous system. So, you know, I'd wake up with morning anxiety, like really strong morning anxiety. And then pretty much my whole day felt like it was spent putting out fires while trying to attune myself to my true nature with self-inquiry with the hope that some sort of insight would break through. It was really like a crucible of suffering. And I still had strong hopes and high hopes and I'd heard from teachers that I really loved and respected and had good pointings, but they would point out this thing that like, yeah, okay, even if you're suffering, it's like the red hot iron ball that you neither want to spit out or swallow. It's like, there's this, that's actually really good. That's fuel for your inner investigations, um, which is true, right? Because it, it helped me keep self uh, doing self inquiry. But I know now, and I think I would have appreciated a different angle. And it couldn't have been any other way, I know, but I think that a largely a lot of that suffering would have been unnecessary if I would have come at it through a different approach. So I wanna talk about that different approach right now because I know back then I would have been really concerned about hearing a different approach as I've sort of alluded to in a previous video where I went into the mechanism of what was getting in the way of me actually embracing a new approach. Essentially, my approach at that time was, okay, I'm feeling so much pain in my body, but the pointer is to keep asking the question, who am I? What is this? Who is, who is the one who's even suffering? With the goal of recognizing my true nature, and waking up. I don't think, and I, I don't believe that approach is effective for people who are suffering from highly sensitive and traumatized nervous systems. People who are waking up, who are constantly in somatic pain, I don't think that warrior one-pointed approach of asking, who am I? What is this? Is a good approach. That's from my direct experience of having gone through a lot of that pain and now having integrated a lot more and feeling a lot more grounded and relaxed and at peace more and more in my experience. And having recognized my true nature as well. So this approach does not neglect insight. That is key. I, I think that one of the big concerns I had was if I were to embrace another approach, it would somehow deviate me from the path as I sort of briefly alluded to in the previous video. Well, as I alluded to, it would deviate me from the path and keep me distracted on untruths about the nature of reality and therefore compromise my awakening when I'm already suffering so much. So it's valuable, it's really valuable for the seeking ego <laughs> to know that it's okay. Like this isn't going to compromise the awakening process. In fact, it's a much more graceful and 
um, a healthier way, I think, to approach our experience rather than suffering. But again, yeah, you also have to trust your instinct. So this is just my invitation, my approach. What is your heart resonating with? What is your deepest truth say about this this sort of investigation? Follow that always. Don't ever listen to me or any other spiritual teacher, in my opinion, to tell you what to do. Always listen to your heart through things like prayer. What is really deeply true for me? Do I believe what Sam is saying? Is this actually resonate with me at a heart level? Then okay, I'll, maybe I'll listen. But if not, okay, I'll just do something else. It's fine. I don't care. Okay. With that said, so what was what was wonderful about this IFS pointer and recommendation when I was studying it is that what the gentleman uh, Richard Schwartz pointed out and what he witnessed in his experience through working with clients over and over again when he was developing the IFS framework was that when he would work with uh, emotional content that was coming up for people, like limiting beliefs, really strong pain and contractions in their body that would arise circumstantially, that would arise in daily life for them, he noticed that whenever he worked with those parts and they actually integrated and released, he would be asking the question like, okay, so what part is coming up for you now that we can look at. And after these people worked through the emotional content that was arising in experience, they often came to the, uh, the same conclusion that he saw over and over again. And this is congruent in my experience very directly as well as someone who's been through this very directly, that once they integrated these parts, they, they said something along the lines of, well, all that's left is myself. I don't even know, like, there's no other parts. There's just awareness. There's just... And what they were pointing out was the, that in fact, with the reconciliation and the integration of those turbulent parts in their psyche through doing emotion work and shadow work, that naturally led to the mind to come to a, to a rest, a resting place in consciousness that was more open, curious, compassionate, courageous, clear. Clear is a key one. There's eight qualities. Previously for me, I was trying to push through this big wall of suffering with questions like, who am I? with pointers from good, like good teachers. Who am I? Who's the one who's suffering in effort to identify my true nature, right? And there's a place for that because we want to cultivate insight. Like who is even the one doing all of this emotion work? Who is even the one who wants to feel better? Who is like, and that's a very good question. But I think with what IFS identifies is that with this recognition of our true self that comes through, not so much trying to push through that wall with penetrating questions and using suffering as the fuel, but rather we're engaging with the emotional content that's causing a lot of distress in our experience. If you're being honest with yourself, you're still feeling a lot of distress. That's why you're meditating, right? Maybe it is. You're seeking something like equanimity. You're seeking something like anatta. You're seeking something like no self to realize anicca, anatta, dukkha, to realize the big self, to realize awareness, to realize non-doership is probably because you're suffering in experience, right? And what is that suffering? Where is that coming from? You could say it's from resistance. You could say it's from your reactivity to what's arising. And that is true. And there's very much a place for de-identification from resistance and thought and buying into mind identification and all of the stories your mind is spitting out about what this is and all this, all this stuff. But there's also room to accommodate that at the same time to allow for thought, to allow for thought to arise and to allow for deep feeling to arise of these parts that are coming up, these very deep painful contractions, like chronic anxiety, chronic pain, inability to express your anger, your rage, your fullest expression, you'll just be free as a human. But if we can meet those parts and just fully feel them deeply, 
with the background understanding that this is actually nurturing the cultivation of insight, that I'm not actually deviating too deeply from what I'm actually pursuing by asking questions like, who am I? What is this? And we're bringing much more compassion to those parts. IFS has a, uh, again, riffing off IFS, there are no bad parts. So if we're bringing that compassionate infusion of attention into sensations, infusing love, this is no amount, no, even this crippling anxiety that's been here for so long, it's totally fine as it is. It can be here. It's trying to protect me, in fact. If we can bring that loving awareness, we just have to put up with that guy. I'm in Sri Lanka and uh, <laughs> I don't know what he's saying, but uh, <laughs> fuck, he's going to keep going, isn't he? Maybe I'll cut the video. Hold on. <laughs> so to summarize really what I'm trying to put very directly, if we can get to this place where we can recognize that there may be doubts about trying another modality such as shadow work or what I would offer or what some other teacher would offer to help you integrate your emotions. If we can push through that doubt, just gently trusting our hearts to open up to the fact that there is in fact a different way that if I address my emotions and the things that I'm trying to meditate a lot to probably heal or feel more equanimity toward, if I can integrate those, that's actually serving deeper insight because once those parts are integrated, once those parts are liberated, what's that, what, what comes forth is a natural rested state, the big self, self with a capital S which becomes the foundation that we can then attune our attention to and bathe in this awareness, this loving, courageous, understanding awareness, clear, compassionate, all of these qualities. We can bathe in that without worrying about trying to like keep penetrating through this huge wall of emotional reactivity and just bring more of a relaxed, compassionate, curious attention toward resting as awareness. And what this brings about in my experience is a deep embodiment. Embodiment being the key word, what I care so much about on this channel, probably the, the number one thing, if I were to summarize what I, I want to do with this whole process. And so that's really what I want to do on this channel is to help non-dual seekers with sensitive and traumatized nervous systems like I had feel deeply embodied with like efficient means, but also to not compromise insight. And I think this is the solution. We really have to come at this through a unique angle of rather than penetrating through this mountain of suffering, this big wall of suffering, which, can, which has its place and you have to trust your heart to know when, when you wanna do that. But why not just come at it through this approach of integrating emotions, feeling better, feeling deeply embodied in our experience, and then keep coming back to that place of curiosity for the, with, through the lens of the big self and deepening in insight by staying curious, open, relaxed, and aware to investigating our experience and deepening in the mystery. So I'll leave you with that today and uh, subscribe to my newsletter. The link will be in the description. If you, I'm going to be releasing more uh, resources and support for people who are in this space. And uh, yeah, if you could like the video and subscribe as well, if you found it valuable, it just helps out the channel and other people find this stuff. So thank you very much and have a lovely day.